What's up, Ghost Lorians? Welcome to the Ghost Lore of Hawaii Paranormal Paradise Podcast or Go PP. What? Nope. Nope. That's not going to be the podcast nickname. I'll keep working on it. We got the Fire Raging. We got the Poke and Limu Salad Poo Poo's on ice along with the green bottles. What else we missing? Paranormal Pakalolo. Duh. Hey, calm down. Oh, I want to give a special shout out to Nicole at Blackwater Apothecary. They actually made a ghost lore of Hawaii paranormal Pakalolo incense. They sent... <laughs> sent. Like smells. They sent me some samples. They use notes of Pakalolo, hibiscus petals, and tea. So relaxing. It's a limited line that should be launching soon if it's not out already. Check out their online shop at www.blackwaterapothecary.com. Check them out. Tonight, I'll be covering a couple of haunted hotels and the stories behind their obakes, ghosts. So I hope you brought your sleeping bags, because you might just have to camp here on the beach instead of heading back to your accommodations. Because you'll be scared. So sit back, get cozy, and let's get into this. The Ritz-Carlton brand of hotels are known for luxury and unwavering commitment to service, according to their website. With over a hundred years of history, the brand has won numerous awards and is seen as setting the gold standard for hospitality, again from their website. With hundreds of hotels and resorts in 30 countries, it's a no-brainer to pair luxury with tropical paradise. Back in the late 1980s, the company planned to do exactly that by creating a gorgeous beachfront hotel in Kapalua, a resort development minutes north of Lahaina. Located on the northwest coast of Maui, Kapalua known to Hawaiians as Honokahua, is less than six square miles and home to beautiful beaches, accommodations, shops, restaurants, and golf courses. Wanting to add their own luxurious stamp in the area, the Ritz-Carlton Hotel Group drew up plans for a beachfront resort overlooking the turquoise waters of Honokahua Bay. The plans were approved by Maui County, and in 1987, developers began the first steps towards building the resort. Excavation of the large sand dunes located in the bay. However, almost immediately, construction crews learned there was more to the area than just the sand they were hired to move. Carl shut off the engine to his digger and climbed down. He and his crew had only just begun digging into the soft white sand of Honokahua before coming across the first set of remains. Sticking out of the six to seven foot hole created by the digger was a shattered piece of bone. Carl hopped into the hole and knelt down next to what looked like 
a femur partially exposed in the sand. He used his hands to dig around the leg bone, but before he could remove it entirely, he felt more bones. Over the next several minutes, it became apparent they had discovered the skeletal remains of a human. Carl's supervisor said the remains were obviously ancient, so there was no rush to get the police involved as it was too old to be connected to a crime. Just some old bones. Throw them in that box over there, he said to Carl and reminded the crew they were on a time crunch. Ellie, hurry up. Back then, there were no state laws or procedures on what to do if anyone came across historic archaeological finds. So most of the time, bones were discarded and either burned or tossed away. Carl, being part Hawaiian by blood and growing up on Maui, had heard rumors of Honokahua being an ancient burial site, but this body was the first confirmation he knew of personally. The workers uncovered roughly ten other bones and placed them in the crate, but the smaller pieces were ignored. Carl climbed back into his digger to continue with the job. However, less than 30 minutes later, the crew found another set of remains. Then another. Then another. Over the next few days, more than a hundred skeletal remains were found. Yet, more would be uncovered as the project continued. As many as 2,000 bodies would be found on the property. It turned out, Kapalua Land Company, the developers hired to build the resort, knew Honokahua could be a burial site before it was chosen as the location. The company worked with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to approve the construction permits. However, the actual size of the sacred burial site was not fully understood until construction uncovered these bones. Once the sheer number of skeletal remains were discovered, the historical significance of the site was realized. The history of the site found in Honokahua was not well documented due to the lack of written history of Hawaiians. Plus, burial sites for Hawaiians were highly secretive in general. As mentioned in Episode 8, Burial Rituals of Hawaiians, bones were highly prized for their mana spiritual power, so grave robbing was common. To combat this, Hawaiians took great care in hiding these final resting spots, especially for royalty. This explains why rumors of the site existed, mostly through legend. In the end, Honokahua would be the second largest burial site found in Hawaii. The importance of the discovery impacted the original agreement Kapalua Land Company had with OHA, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, which started a battle between protesters and the developer. People who objected to the resort gained a temporary victory when then-Governor John Waihe'e put a temporary halt to development. However, the state could not force Kapalua Land Company to give up the plan to build the $100 million resort altogether. The developers had already secured the rights and all county-issued construction permits, so the delay 
would only be as long as it took for the two parties to find a compromise. In the end, protesters would win out, sort of. The highly controversial development shined light on the mistreatment of remains discovered in the islands as development of the land increased. The creation of laws and regulations stemmed from this incident, making it a requirement for developers to halt all construction if bones or any other significant archaeological finds were discovered. The state would eventually condemn the original site of the hotel for $6 million, and the Ritz-Carlton Resort would be redesigned and pushed further inland. The section of beachfront land, the 1,200 to 2,000 skeletal remains were found, would become the Honokahua Preservation Site and would be listed on the Hawaii Register of Historic Places, one of the most historically significant sites in the islands. The sacred site is reserved exclusively for Native Hawaiians to gather and conduct rituals to honor their ancestors, and the public is prohibited from entering. Kapu. All the remains found during the excavation were relocated and buried at a new site. But even this was surrounded by controversy. Some people within the community were insulted that the workers responsible for the reinterment of the bones were minimum wage employees. They felt the cultural significance of the job should have warranted more care. However, a lot of these workers were Hawaiian and said they would have done the job for free out of respect. While many have relaxing stays at the Ritz-Carlton Kapalua, there are a number of people who have reported feeling eerie vibes while on the property, even without knowing the history prior to their stay. One TripAdvisor review mentioned a tourist snapping a picture of a vivid sunset with their camera. When they returned home to get it printed, just a distorted, dark silhouette of trees and sky was visible. No other photos out of the hundreds captured had shown that type of distortion. The review mentions the family feeling eerie vibes since first stepping foot on the resort. I once heard a story of a tourist looking out from their lanai balcony in the middle of the night and saw dozens of dark, half-naked figures standing motionless, scattered across the property. Strangely, she couldn't make out any of the details of the people. The next morning, she asked the staff if there had been some sort of late-night performance or historical reenactment, but was only met with confused looks. The front desk had no clue what she was talking about, and no one else reported the strange sight. Whether or not spirits still reside on the property is still up for debate. But the resort has had its share of problems. Within a four-year period, it was sold to new owners three different times. There have also been multiple drownings in Kapalua, even though the bay is often voted 
as one of the best beaches in Hawaii. Due to the white sand and crystal clear calm water, So if you're visiting the Ritz-Carlton or any of the resorts in Kapalua, be safe and respectful to the beaches and spirits. The area was supposed to be the final resting place for thousands of Hawaiians before tourism altered those plans. You can't help to wonder if there's a few restless spirits that still roam the area. Spooky, yeah? Next, we're flying over to Kauai to visit another hotel rumored to have been occupied with more than just tourists. The stories on why the hotel was haunted may be even more shocking than the actual stories of its ghosts. When Hurricane Eva passed through the state of Hawaii, In November of 1982, it would become the costliest hurricane to run through the islands until Hurricane Iniki 10 years later. Eva devastated the islands of Ni'ihau, Kauai, and Oahu with wind gusts greater than 100 miles an hour and causing waves larger than 30 feet. At the time, Hale Nani, a small hotel located on the south shores of Kauai, near Poipu, stood for decades before being completely destroyed by the hurricane. Little can be found online regarding the hotel's construction. Just the memories of the older residents of Kauai detail the lodge's origins. In the late 50s or early 60s, contractors from the mainland came into the Koloa landing area to build the Seaside Hotel. Once construction was completed, stories on the hotel being haunted were almost immediately attached to the property. Over the roughly two decades of it being operational, the hotel went through many owners. At first, it was the Hale Nani, then the Sheraton Seven Seas, then the Ponderosa of Kauai, back to the Hale Nani again, before finally the Poipu Village Resort. But locals felt the changes were associated with more than just poor management of the hotel. Many believe the property was cursed from the very beginning, starting with its construction. In order to build the hotel, which was perched near the water's edge, developers were required to add to the site's foundation. So boulders and sand were brought in to extend the shore. Locals believe it was the sand that started the issues associated with the hotel being cursed. Dr. Kimitsu, not his real name, an anthropology professor working in the area, was called in by contractors of the Halenani for a consultation. Uh... I wasn't sure why they invited me to the property, but I went anyway. Maybe I would get some free rooms in the end, yeah? What he observed on the construction site shocked and disturbed him like no other. 
Dr. Kimitsu followed one of the construction supervisors as they walked down the stairs to a dark, damp room on the bottom floor of the hotel. Most of the lower levels of the hotel's structure had already been built on top of the shore that had been extended with the imported boulders and sand, but the hotel was still far from finished. The professor was led to several large wooden boxes tucked away in a back corner of the room. As he approached the boxes, an anxiousness fluttered in his stomach like his fight or flight response was being activated. He slowly glanced into the boxes and was shocked to find it full of skeletons. It was a gruesome sight. It looked like something you would see in Cambodia. With all the skulls, Kimitsu was quoted saying, referencing the hundreds of skeletons displayed in remembrance of the mass killings during the Cambodian genocide. He learned the bones had been brought in with the truckloads of sand the contractors were using as fill for the foundation. The sand originated from the dunes at Mahaulepu, a southern beach on Kauai, and were dug up and loaded into the trucks before being sent to the construction site to be sifted. The larger bones that did not go through the sifter were taken out and tossed into the wood crates. I told the contractor, eh, hey, Your concrete is filled with pieces of human bones, you know, Kimitsu recalled. The boxes of skeletal remains were all missing the smaller bones, like fingers, toes, and whatever bone fragments that fell through the sifter. According to Kimitsu, he heard the sand had been sourced from an area of Mahaulepu that was known to be an ancient burial ground. He said he recalled visiting the dunes in that area in the past and found there were so many bones in the sand you couldn't even walk there without hearing crunching sounds. There were bones sticking up out of the ground. Kimitsu claimed he was almost certain the contractors knew about the bones beforehand. The contractor went ask me, Well, what do you think we should do? I told him, You guys lolo, what you guys thinking? Kimitsu instructed the developer to bring back the remains to their original resting place. Disgusted by the actions of the developers, Kimitsu left the site. Years later, he would learn His instructions were not followed. I was told the bones were poured into the concrete walkways around the hotel, Kimitsu stated. But I don't know who in their right mind would do something like that. However, many different people would come out over the years with similar stories regarding the improper disposal of these remains. One story said the bones were just tossed out into the ocean in front of the property. Another claim made by a woman whose father worked for the hotel said racial tensions caused the divide within the workers and the bones were thrown into the cement mixer to spite the Hawaiian laborers. This concrete was then used to build the hotel's swimming pool area. Infuriated, the Hawaiians placed a curse on those workers before walking off of the job. 
Soon after, rumors of the cursed property began spreading throughout the community. One story involved the new restaurant and club that was in the process of opening within the hotel. Many of the kitchen staff complained of ghostly encounters, and the restaurant found it difficult to keep staff long enough for the grand opening. The partners decided to do a blessing combined with a lavish luau for the ghosts before the grand opening. Three kahunas were brought in for the blessing, and a large plate of food, along with two glasses of vodka and brandy, were left in the storeroom as an offering to the spirits. The kahuna warned the staff that the offering should always be left out. No touch them. The sightings stopped, and the grand opening of the restaurant was a huge success. That was until the day the chef got sick of the offering taking up space in the storeroom and tossed it. That same night, one of the cooks was seriously burned when an oven blew up in his face, causing an emergency hospital visit. A few hours later, another staff member was knocked unconscious after slipping on the floor. That same week, the hotel owners notified the restaurant that they would not be renewing the 20-year lease, causing a long legal battle ending in the restaurant's closure. The owner of the new establishment following the previous restaurant's closure also brought in a kahuna before his grand opening. That kahuna also detected restless spirits lingering around the restaurant area of the hotel. Kitchen staff reported items disappearing, then reappearing in the same spot days later. There were a lot of unexplainable electronic issues within the new restaurant, and staff were constantly being injured while on the job. That restaurant would ultimately be destroyed by Hurricane Eva, along with the rest of the hotel. So what do you think? Was the multiple changes in the hotel due to mismanagement? Or was it cursed from the very beginning? Do you think it was the skeletal remains mixed into the concrete, then used for the hotel's foundation that caused all the issues. If that's the case, I want to add another disturbing fact. After Hurricane Eva destroyed the hotel, most of the remaining concrete from the foundation was gathered and reused to build a road less than a mile away. Since then, a new development was built on top of that foundation and still stands to this day. You think it's haunted? That might be a story for a different episode. Mahalo as always for catching tonight's episode of Ghost Lore of Hawaii. This will most likely be one of several episodes I'll be covering on Hawaii's haunted hotels. Get plenty. It was important for me to start this series with the Ritz Carlton Kapalua, since it's what sparked the creation of regulations placed on developers when coming across archaeological items during construction. 
a lot of history has been lost over the decades due to the mismanagement of artifacts discovered during development and tossed out. So it was the first step in reducing damage to these historical finds. I feel many of the haunted hotel stories are due to being built on old burials and spiritual sites. So I'm excited to dive into more of these unique tales in future episodes. There are so many terrifying stories that pop up in every corner of the state. Do you have a story of a haunted hotel that you'd like me to cover? Or do you have your own spooky experience while vacationing in Hawaii? You can email me your story at ghostlore.of dot hawaii at gmail.com to those of you who have reached out just to say hi thank you it means so much that you take time out of your lives to reach out and to send me messages of encouragement i do my best to respond to each message sent to me unless it's just an email saying hi i've been getting a lot of emails that just say hi So I assume those are bots or scammers. I ignore those. My bad if it's a real listener. If you're enjoying Ghost Lore of Hawaii, please rate and review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Reviews are huge and vital in helping get the podcast in front of new listeners. Shout out to those of you who follow me on Repod. Shout out Repod. I've partnered with Repod, an app that lets listeners share podcasts with their followers. So if you love true crime or the paranormal, Repod helps you discover new shows in those genres. It's also the easiest way to chat with your favorite Repod hosts. It's like Facebook, Goodreads, Patreon, and a podcast listening app all in one. Click the link in the show notes to download Repod for free and to follow me. I'm also very active on Instagram, too active, at ghostlore.of.hawaii. I'm always posting on my stories, and it's kind of a peek into my life. Although my intent is to keep all historical information as accurate as possible, I cannot always guarantee it will be. Please look into any information you find interesting on your own. There's always so much information that I can't always include in one episode. Some names and locations may be altered for privacy's sake. Discover new shows in those... In those... In those genre... In those genres. To find shows in those genre... In those genre, in those genres, in those genres, www.blackwater, <laughs> blackwater, apocathar, apocath, apothecary, blackwater, apop, apothecary, blackwater apothecary, got it.